family. Um, good to be with you on this Thursday. Um, today's reading is going to come out of Isaiah 26, verse 12. And it says this, Lord, you will establish peace for us, for you ha have also done all your works in us. I love that. What, what a great verse. It's so worthy to remember. He will establish peace for us. Like He will set in place. He will settle peace for us. And for the reason, he says, is that he's done all our works in us or for us, in us and for us. And it's beautiful. Well, it's Thursday. It's absolutely gorgeous outside. I hope the wind isn't interfering with um with being able to hear this. Um, but I hope you can enjoy some of the day, the fresh air out here. And just to give you a heads up, tonight we are having a night of worship and we're going to be doing it right outside here on the patio. And so come on out for that. We're going to have the um, the fire pit going. The worship team's going to be to be doing it around the fire pit and we'll have chairs. You can also bring a blanket to sit on if you want to do that. Um, bring a jacket to keep warm. It's great, great that I can say that at this point in time um, and on a Sunday on Sunday this Sunday we're gonna hit pause on first John sort of and we're gonna do a series called can I hear God and in this series we're gonna explore some of the various ways that we hear God or or tune in to hear him and so each week it's gonna be like six weeks long each week we're going to hit on a subject um, an, an essential subject on how we can hear him more, how we can learn his voice more. And so um, we know a lot of people get confused in this area. So we just want to hear from the Holy Spirit. But the, the question is, how? And so we're going to hit on some of these major arenas of where we where we explore just the how, how to hear him. And so we start that with this week. Um, we start with hearing God in community. And so as you saw in our invite cards for this series, um, we're going to have coffee after our gatherings, um, at least this one. Um, not just coffee, though. We're going to have snacks and other things as well. Our espresso, espresso machine, um, the espresso bar is going to be open. April has a popcorn machine coming in and cotton candy um, machine for the kids and adults too. And so we're just going to celebrate like this new fall season in our community at, at Calvary. So um, invite a friend, coworker, family member, enemy um, to this thing. It's going to be a great kickoff for the season. Um, but let's talk about this, this passage from Isaiah, the Lord establishing peace for us. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I shared another verse with you out of Isaiah too, um, with the word established in it. It was a word that was spoken to King Ahaz, and God told him if he would not believe, he would surely not be established. Like there's no stability there. There's no stability is going to be found without faith, without believing in what God has said. And so today we see a similar thing in that God desires to establish peace for us. Now, this is a promise given to Israel, but the rollover is for us. I mean, we see many of these same similar promises given to us in the New Testament about peace. But notice the reason why peace is declared so as to be established. It, it says that you, God, you have done all your works in us. So it's real simple. His works done in us and his works done for us. Inasmuch as we realize this, that it's his work, right, that, that he's done, it's his peace. Inasmuch as we realize that and trust in that, we'll find abiding peace. One of the problems that we have so often is in this, in this area, the uh, arena of lack of peace, is um, simply letting go of control. We just have to be in control. And some of us more than others, but everybody has a control problem. And, and these areas of control are hard because we can think like, if I don't, then it won't, right? And you could fill in, if I don't, whatever that is, and then the fear of what will happen. Or if, if, if I don't, then this won't happen, whatever fear that is. So, um, but what God's letting us know in this passage is it's him. It's all him. It's his work that he's done and is doing in us and for us. And that just sort of takes all the pressure off. I mean, sure, there is the tension of what part do I play in things? 
but a real good indicator of oh, when I've crossed over the line of taking over God's part, the good indicator of that is stress. Like when I'm stressed out, there is most likely a control factor in there that God's pointing out where he's saying, that's mine, that's not yours. Yeah, it affects us, absolutely. But you're, but my establishment in his peace comes from knowing that it's his work that he's doing. One of my favorite verses says, you began a good work in you, we'll be faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So letting go of control, it's an act of trust in the goodness of God. It's knowing that God is for me, that he is really for me and not against me. And knowing that, right? It's learning to be secure in his great love that he proved. I mean, you can't prove love in a greater way than laying down your life for ones that you love. So Isaiah 26, 12. Lord, you will establish peace for us, for you have also done all our works in us. That doesn't mean everything's going to work out in the present moment in just, uh, you know, the way that we think it, or think it should, but God's got it, and he knows where he's bringing it, and he's bringing it to a good and so let me speak God's name over you like he told us in number six. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hey, see you guys tonight. If not tonight, I'll see you on Sunday. God bless you all.